5, 5, 4, 4, 3, 3, 2, 1, 1. Back to back hits. Back to back hits. Hits. We are, we are the same, baby. Do not attempt to adjust your radio. We are in complete control. Strictly the hottest radio we go. Strictly the hottest radio show. Welcome to Strictly the Hottest Radio. I am your emperor. And this is Child of Zion. This week, we have a very special show for you all. I Like I said in the promo, the revolution begins. The revolution is now. Uh, we need to, you know, we've heard it before. We need to take back our streets, right? Uh, no, we need to do more than that. We need to preach the gospel, y'all. Uh, we not only need to preach the gospel, but we need to tear down the high places. Uh, many of us have music that's offensive, not only to us, but also to God. We have videotapes that are offensive, not only to us, but to God. Uh, you know, how you, how am I coming to this conclusion so quickly without giving you proper notice? You know. Here it goes. In the promo, I spoke about uh, Dorothy Perry, and I spoke about COINTELPRO, etc. And what you're going to hear in this interview that's going to be coming up, here with my main man Lavarcier is the results of that, you know, of of us, I say as a black community, taking the bait. You understand what I mean? Of Satan. And he ain't white. Satan would love to have you think, okay, he's white or he's black. It's just evil. Okay? And this stuff has been set up for us to fail. And, you know, especially after Trayvon Martin verdict, I was waiting for the black community to come out to this conclusion the logical conclusion which is we need to tear all the filth down our children are being targeted um our children are our children are being taken advantage of but women are being taken advantage of okay how can i say that okay down here in atlanta top drug uh, uh human trafficking people come down here to find abandoned or not looked after teenagers to traffic and sell elsewhere for other people's evil pleasures okay our community is literally being stripped raw while we're playing around with things that God does not like so community it's time for us to advocate before we are completely destroyed witness the potential of what happens when the hood Meets God Today you will see The shining diamond In the rough Child of Zion Amen, amen Be prepared to see what happens when God meets the who Awesome I'm telling you He'll make you clean With that being said Let's get it y'all Strictly the hottest radio Get some kingdom therapy I guarantee that would bring you some clarity And yes, I mean that with all sincerity Millionaire, kingdom man, I'm a hot commodity Bless beyond belief, man, that's all that I know how to be Years of hard work, you won't get no nonsense out of me You are the common rule and I am the anomaly And it's only because of who I keep inside of me Yes, that, plus the Holy Spirit leading God in me Chucktown, South Jackalack is where I'm from It's the takeover, homie, let me show you how it's done We put it down, it ain't pretty, it ain't fit to 
demons that we laugh at You can't deny the truth, you can crash on the fast track Ultimately you lose, we ducking out like half Like I put my stock in Christ, got the Dow Jones and Nasdaq You looking for the life, turn around like a flashback Here, take this easy path to get you on the right track You can bring your boys to a cool with the men in black Duggin' don't shake me, it made me a sharper cat Took the block, rules apply Christ, now I'm power pack Strictly the hottest radio I told you, and it is. I got the man, Lavoisier, on the phone. Look, this dude right here, I put him in the same category like Corey Red, man. Hip hop uh-huh. scholar. This dude right here, y'all gonna wanna listen to this. Lavoisier, man, tell him who you are. What's poppin', man? It's Lavoisier, aka the rap terrorist, aka rapper turn hacker, represent AO Mega Global Military, aka that Jesus set. Bang, 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 boom, doc, saying gang up every day. Just put it out, man. I'm here. Yeah, now, you know, the thing about it, this guy right here, you know what I mean? We have kind of a something thing in common, man. You know, you know, I do a little programming on the side as well. Okay, word, Okay, word. that's a lie. I do a lot of programming on the side, okay? Uh-oh. <laughs> so, I didn't even know we had that in common, bro. But aside from that, okay, you know what I mean? I need to hear your story. People need to hear your story. Who is Lavoisier? How the heck did you end up in the rap game? Because you definitely look like the dude who I'd be like, you know what? You see that guy come around here, let me know so I can call the police in advance. <laughs> in advance, right? Yeah, well, you know, God is good, man. I grew up in Coney Island, Brooklyn, New York. You know, also Fort Green, Farragut Projects. You know, I lost my mom at a young age. My pops wasn't there. He was an addict, seriously. Serious addict. My uh, my sister raised me, you know, and growing up in the hood, you just look outside, you emulate what you, you know, what you see. Everybody needs something, somebody to see themselves in, man. So when I look outside, people that look like me, people to get the, the kind of attention, I, the kind of attention I feel I want, they the drug dealers, they the dope boys, you know what I'm saying? So that, that's what you aspire to be. And then, you know, music, you know, music influences everybody, but I think that not having, with, you know, 60 to 70 black, black, uh, 60 70 percent of black households having no father figure, I think there's much more of a, of a, of opportunity for outside media to affect who that kid becomes and who they want to be and what they strive to be. So when you look around, only context you see yourself in people to talk like you, walk like you, act like you, is rappers and drug dealers and basketball players. So that was my aspirations as a young and I started rapping when I was a kid, like 14 years old. Um, hit the streets, get outside. You do it, it, you know. Sometimes you get in circles where it just sounds so, so ooh, so dangerous. But you know how anybody that's from the hood know that a lot of that stuff is more regular than not. You know, it's, it's not until you get outside of that circle and you go work somewhere or you move to another type of neighborhood. And they're like, oh wow, you sold drugs. And I'm like, well, everybody sold drugs. You know. <laughs> so, well, see, you gotta slow down because everybody don't know. Everybody don't. They're like, hold on for a minute, bro. How in the heck do you go from, you know? Doing what you do to have a revelation that you need to stop doing what you were doing. Because you got to understand here. You know what I mean? Um, A lot of folks got caught in the trap. You see what I'm saying? You know, and it's funny in the South, that's what they call it the trap, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. South South runs rap, so that's what we call it everywhere now. (laughs) Yeah, right. Now everybody calls it the trap. You be calling it the trap. No, I ain't going to tell you how old I am. Either way it goes. Right. I got to figure this one out, right? The people have got to know. How did you make the transition to a brother that got sense from a brother, you know what I mean, who may have acted like he ain't had none? Who had none, you know what I mean? Who thought he was a smart guy, but really was a fool. It's one of the first revelations I got when I started reading scriptures. That's for another. That's for another day. But um, or maybe for another next ten minutes or so. But you know, I'm, I'm hanging out doing with a lot. Not not all, because we knew. That, you know, let me tell you something about you, other, you Christians out there that uh that don't be sharing the gospel with people that's hood, man. I went to school with Christians, man, and I never knew they was Christians, man. And they they were like just the good guys in school. And when I got saved, I started becoming a Christian rapper, working the circuit. I'm like, I'm seeing gospel singers. And rappers that's like uh you know that knew the lord even back then man like you used to chill you ain't never shared the gospel with me bro but uh you know that, that's another thing. so don't be afraid to share the gospel man the truth is more powerful than any gangster but anyway so no nah, you needed to say that bro because you know that why was the most powerful thing you said all day y'all need to check the ministry of this brother right here this dude right here is serious how in the heck did you make the transition in the sense bro 
Well, truthfully, man, one of my mans, he was a rapper. He wasn't so much of a street dude, but he was out there with us. You know, we doing what we do. We smoking, drinking. We, we were rap partners. And, you know, his parents used to go through a lot, man. And they were kind of like in and out of church on the fence. And we were kind of seeking, me and him. We used to, you know, read books on all type of... Me and my friends, youngest, man, we thought we were smart. We used to read books before it became a buzzword. Before it was the internet, we was reading books on uh, Illuminati and all of this kind of stuff. So we were seeking some sort of truth. We used to read a lot of New Age books. Um, Celestine Prophecy, Behold the Pair. So we had a hunger. And so my man's parents got saved And you know Whatever they hit him with One weekend He came out on the block Talking to me like Yo son This is what we gotta do So I'm in an abandoned building um, On 36th Street And Neptune Avenue It's a real place In Coney Island We in one of the abandoned par- Abandoned apartments That we used to count our drugs up in And get high in And we smoking Doing what we do And he's like Yo son We gotta rap for God Now you, you know We just young brothers From the street Who are already on some kind of path Of seeking some kind of Higher learning or righteousness Or whatever And he was like Yo man Cause we were big into energy And the universe and all that he's like nah man it ain't energy it's God that thing we feel that that consciousness that there's something more it's God and you know in my heart you know I was a G I was street so I'm like nah fam I don't really know I I wasn't really trying to hear it but my heart was really pricked he didn't say Jesus he didn't say Bible Um, but I knew that what he was saying was true it was ringing true in in my heart to the core of my being even though outwardly I was like man I don't know I'm not sure so we talked for a little bit I don't remember what the rest of the conversation looked like we went back and forth so he leaves I walk him out I come back to the trap spot and I count up my money I don't even know if if that's what I did but this is what I remember I got down on my knees it was a dirty burgundy black carpet abandoned apartment and I said God I don't know who you are I don't know your name and I don't even know if you're real but if you're real you know I need he just told me something, man. And it wasn't this arrogant declaration that God had to prove himself to me. It was a sincere outcry for for truth. That if God if there was a God, I wanted to know him. And God began to make himself known, known to me from there, man. You know, we weren't a religious family at all. We didn't really go to church like that. Once in the blue. Tried to put us in Sunday school when we was kids, but not really. And I but we had Bibles all around the crib. My sister's a correction officer. Shout out to her um for raising me and doing the best she could. And so we just had Bibles around the crib. I just started grabbing one and reading it. And I started with the book of Proverbs. And so you know now now you talking about a dude who's 19 years old, selling drugs, goes in his mouth, dreads doing whatever. whatever. That young and that you, that young and that you scared to cross, that you cross the street when he walking. I was that young and, but I also had a Bible in my pocket. And on my hustle breaks, I would go into the staircase, count up my drugs, count up my drug money, roll my weed, and start reading the Bible. And the Book of Proverbs was like nothing else I'd ever, no, no wisdom or knowledge or literature that I ever come across was rocking me like the truth of Scripture. No pastor, no preacher, not even Jesus yet, so to speak. I just grabbed the book It's the Bible And Proverbs just began to Beat me up You know what I'm saying So I mean I, like we, we just thought We were like smart drug dealers Like one of my homies my, He's still my man to this day Like you know We used to do a lot of dirt together But when he was 15 years old He won a chess championship In Madison Square Garden So we just thought We knew it all And um But the Bible said One thing that The first the first time I remember Scripture pricking my heart It says He who hates correction Is stupid And I just thought about How cool And smart And hood And we thought we were but we hated correction. We used to always argue with each other like all the time. It was like a notorious thing. Nobody could tell anybody anything. And so that was just one of the scriptures just began to rock my heart. And so as I read scriptures as a whole, I just began to feel like, yo, this is the way I, my mind processed it. I said, this is either the greatest truth Oh, I, I said, well, I started at this end. I said, this is either the greatest se- deception that ever that ever was made by man, and I see why it's caused so many wars and why so many people have X, Y, Z, or it's either the greatest truth that mankind is, is overlooking. And obviously, you know what side of that um, argument I fell on because it was rocking my world, and it started from there. That was the beginning of my journey. No pastor, no the scripture, the Bible, and the Holy Spirit begin to work, and that's why even to this day when I talk to youngest or minister anywhere or talk to anybody about God, I tell them, look, God can speak for himself um, it can't be by human persuasion because if someone can talk you into it today someone can come and talk you out of it tomorrow so I encourage people to ask God for himself because a God that can't answer for himself is not worth following and that began my journey and there's more to the story obviously that was 15 number 16 years ago I'm not at 19 I'm about to be 35 in June so it was a while ago and um yeah man that was the beginning of my journey and that's if it's music oh, you want we're gonna give it to you. Non-stop music. Non-stop. Non-stop. More. More. Yeah, yo. Turn your volume up. Child of Zion and Emperor.